With summer just around the corner, I decided to make a tutorial on one of my favorite projects I've ever done. When I first decided to make hurricane candles, I found it challenging to find any source with complete instructions. So despite this, I decided to forge onward and learn some of the unknowns myself. It has not been smooth sailing, as wax is not the easiest material to work with or clean up, so patience is key. I recommend getting assistance from a parent before working with melted wax. This project was initially more costly due to the necessity of the candle mold. I purchased mine from Amazon.com and I will leave a link in the description below. Other materials that are required for this project include dollar store candles or candle holders. Please make sure that your candle holder can fit inside your candle mold, with room to spare for your shells and other adornments you'd like to include in the wax. I also purchased battery operated tea lights from a dollar store. You can buy seashells or gemstones from the craft store, but I found these on the beach. The last thing you'll need to purchase is paraffin wax, which is usually surprisingly cheap. I found mine in the canning section of the grocery store. Items I already had were sealing spray, a medium pot, a glass measuring cup, and utensils I didn't mind getting wax on. The good thing about this project is that once you have all these materials, you can make many candles, not just a single candle. I made about six candles over the course of one week, and I still have material to spare. To begin, first we take our dollar store candles out of their holders. If you let them sit in the freezer overnight, this causes the wax to contract, making it easier to clean out. If you opted for a glass container to fit inside your candle mold instead, then you can luckily skip this step. Ensure you clean out any residual wax on the dollar store candle holder, along with any stickers that it may have came with. Allow these to dry thoroughly before you work with these any further. If you found your shells and sea glass on the beach, it is a good idea to boil them to remove any dirt and to other toxins. I boiled my shells for about 5 minutes before letting them dry in a strainer. I also decided to break up my shells to make sure the bigger ones could fit around the glass holder. Next, we need to boil our wax. I used about two sticks of paraffin wax per candle. With my water already boiling from the seashells, I placed my glass measuring cup into the water and the sticks of paraffin inside the measuring cup. This acts as a double boiler. While being patient for the paraffin to melt, we can quickly spray sealant onto the inside of our candle mold. This allows the candle to be more easily removed from the mold. Since the wax probably still isn't completely melted, we then place the candle holder upside down in our candle mold. The bottom of the mold with the hole should be adjacent to the side of the candle holder opening. Once it is centered, we can place our beach findings around the candle holder any way you want. Make sure there are spaces between the items you wish to embed in the wax since the wax needs to be able to surround them. Make sure you place your candle mold on a cookie sheet or something that you don't mind getting covered in wax if an accident happens. The paraffin wax should be melted by this point. Using a wooden spoon or other utensil, pour your wax into the mold until it reaches the bottom of the candle holder inside the mold. Keep pressing down as hard as you possibly can until a thin film of hardened wax forms. 
Then slowly and carefully remove the wooden spoon. The candle mold still will be hot from the molten wax, so be careful if you need to move it at this point. I left my candle mold to sit overnight, preferably for 24 hours. The sealing spray should allow you to remove the paraffin candle easily, but if not, heat up a warm dishcloth and wrap it around the mold, periodically trying to work the candle out of the mold. If you are not happy with the appearance of your hurricane candle right out of the mold, we can blow dry it to expose more of the shells you put in the wax. I spent a long time blow drying this candle to expose the shells evenly around the hurricane candle. Let that sit for as long as possible before moving it, as the wax still will be malleable for a while. And that's it! I tied some raffia around my hurricane candle and placed a battery operated tea light inside, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. This project requires a lot of patience, time, and equipment, so make sure you have a safe place to work and a safe place to keep your candles to set overnight. I hope this video helps you learn how to make hurricane candles. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!